That's good. Yeah, I think a lot of folks are asking about, you know, what they need to do if, uh, for the summer. Uh, we have um, parents, I mean, students, uh, high school and college students. So I think today we want to spend a few minutes to talk about this topic, and then we're going to open up to questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, where should we begin? Let, let's yeah, start summer start. plan. Summer plan. Mm. I mean, it really depends on where you are. Um, the child is in their education career. Um, summer plans are great. Um, internships are a good plan if you're in both in high school and college, um, depending on where you're headed. If you're a high schooler looking to get into a top school for a specific major like computer science, then it's probably great to get some uh, internship experience working on some applications to kind of build up your experience for that. Now, if you're uh, a college student looking for that, uh, looking for, you know, what your plans are after graduating, <laughs> then it's good to go ahead and look for um, some internship positions that match up with the specific jobs you're looking to apply for. This year, maybe we'll start from college students and go down to high school students. It's very hard for college students to get paid internship. Any suggestions? I mean, definitely, you know, we, you know, we discussed um, last week, when's the best time to get a internship in college? You know, how we narrow, narrowed it down is when you're in your junior year of college, um, junior year going into your senior year, that's one of the most pivotal times when you need a good internship, right? If you really want to have an offer before you graduate, it's really good to pick a company, you know, that's doing well, a bigger company. Um, you know, everyone, everybody wants the Google, the Facebook, the, the Tesla, the Microsoft, you know, jobs, right? Everybody wants that if you're a computer science major, but there's only a few seats, right? So uh, what I tell people is it's very difficult if you can't secure something before uh, you graduate. So um, even after your freshman year, it's already good to get into an internship, try to get something um, as soon as possible, just so that when you come into your next few summers, you already have some internship experience because if you wait until the end, you're going to have some difficulty trying to land something big. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are saying that right now the full-time recruiting is based on really based on return offers. Yep. That's the biggest people. My gosh, that's most, hard. Most companies are now internally promoting. They don't recruit from outside their company. So if you're not in their system already, that's the difficulty. So, even if you're like the smallest position or in a different department of that company, at least you're in the company. So take that as a advice to try to get into some of these bigger ones. Mm, that's hard. So that put more pressure uh, for the college students, right? So it's like they haven't, you know, some of the new parents, they haven't really, uh, freshman's parents or incoming freshman's parents, they haven't really started and they have to think about internship. Is that too much pressure, Gerard? It is if you, if you think about it, but it, Everything is pressure, right? Everybody is a perfectionist. They want to succeed. But like we said, everyone else is trying to uh, obtain the same seat, the same award. But there's only a select few that you know get it. So you have to stay creative and try other routes. Like we said before, um, it maybe it's better to build a network within your college because maybe they could refer you into these bigger companies. So join organizations within your school. If you're a college college student looking for something to do over summer, join some organizations within your school. There's a, a organizations that are, you know, purely based on your major and what you're looking to get into. There's societies that, you know, biological sciences society, if you're looking to get into med, med school, they have clubs, you know, tailored for that. Um, there's even fraternities, co-ed fraternities for specific uh, pre-law, pre, uh, pre-medical, right? So, it really depends on what you're looking to do. You just kind of have to apply yourself. And I see. Okay. if anybody has any questions inside the Zoom call, please uh, go ahead and leave us a chat. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer. Each week, me and Dan Dan are on this uh, weekly uh, live stream to kind of answer any qu questions uh, about college, whether you're in high school, whether you're in college, or whether you're even younger than that, looking to kind of pre-plan your educational career. We're happy to help and kind of give you guys the the information needed to make a good decision. Mm, okay, yeah, maybe not all of them uh, know about us. So, Gerard, quick introduction about yourself. 
Yes. So I uh, um, graduated from UC San Diego. I studied international business. And I've been working with Dan Dan for the last year uh, plus now, uh, maintaining her uh, digital platforms and communications for all her uh, customers, as well as managing the internship program within Hattie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Dan Dan. I'm the founder for Hattie. So I'm going to just show you, not everybody knows about website. So yeah, this is our website and this is the mobile version of it. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, your brother's uh, standard language is in Chinese, so that will load on WeChat in Chinese. So we have one internship. Okay, so it's more like, I wouldn't say called internship, but if folks are interested in full stack development, we have experienced engineer, Aaron, will teach. It's about, I don't know, long time, 18 weeks of, 16 weeks or 18 weeks of, um, um, 16 or 18 sessions of coding, uh, a full, uh, full stack. So front end, back end. At the end, uh, the goal is to you deliver um, a chat yeah. app. Okay, so chat GPT and, you know, it's not chat GPT, okay. It's to develop an application, a chat app. And uh, toward the end, uh, and uh, Coach Aaron and myself, and maybe Gerard, you're welcome to join us. We'll help uh, students to um, beef up their resume. Okay, we so we have a student at uh, UC Berkeley ECS uh, graduated this year, or you know, next week actually, and uh, he was sending resumes all over the place and was not um, able to get intern, or not, not was not able to get um, uh, interviews. So I helped him out and uh, really um, enhanced the resume. And now I think he got two offers and he took the offer at Silicon Valley and it will start, you know, in a month or so. So that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So I myself, Stan Dan Pan, I'm the founder for Hattie Education. And you can also Google us and uh, here, just put a Google Hattie in and you will see this is us. The website is here. We have a lot of reviews. Thanks um, for all the parent support. And uh, I'm not going to go through the details, but focusing on this specific boot camp. Um, so for folks that who have engineering background, who like to code, it doesn't really matter your high school or college students, all of you need to pass a test. Okay. So a proficient test. And please don't use ChatGPT to help you out. And um, once you pass it and you're, you're welcome to enroll, it's pretty intensive and not only the dive session, but also offline, um, you really have to do some work. At the end, you have an application to deliver, to show, and we'll help you with a resume, we'll train you for how to interview. And that will, you know, I build a good foundation for you to next semester, if you want to get a paid intern somewhere else in a big company, I think will be very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. If you do really well, we can uh, write a very good uh, letter of rec. Um, so far, you know, our letter of rec is uh, very helpful. And um, and our students, our interns, Gerard Wright, uh, they're getting into good jobs. I just got a, you know, verification for, a, I show you here. Just, uh, it's everything. We, we love working with interns. Yeah. And, I mean, our uh, goal is... Not just to provide a program, but to make sure that we're ha helping these students get, you know, good offers at good companies. Yes, so, yes. Um, just like so, Dan Dan said yeah. with Arian, you know, that's great that we were able to f help his fix his resume to get into a, a top company. So that's very yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an ECS student at, uh -huh. at Berkeley, not Coach Arian. Yeah, Got it. so, um, but anyway, yeah, we have, we, the, the whole platform was started by uh, a few interns and one of them, um, Alice actually, I uh, referenced the, the background checking company just approached me today and uh, she's landing a full-time job in Wall Street. Okay. Awesome. So she started with we, us about We also got some questions as well, Dan Dan. So it looks like well, we have some. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop share and uh, let's, let's get the questions. Okay. So I'll go through them. Uh, the first yeah, one. Go is, ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, any suggestions for first year students on the first course selection? Mm. Um, I think this is freshman. Uh, it's a very general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I think it kind of relates to our previous conversation to answer this one is um, really uh, how it's structured in college is you have your uh, university requirements, your college requirements, and also your major requirements. So there's different requirements from different colleges. So 
to give you an example, at UC San Diego, there's a we have an inter-college system. So as a university as a whole, we're UC San Diego. But every student is divided up into a specific college. Each college has their own requirements to be able to get a bachelor's there. And there's also specific major requirements. So there's two different requirements needed, as well as a overall university requirements. So those are typically your prerequisites. Your, they want you to have a, uh, a minimum level of English uh, courses that you've taken and typically uh, some math classes as well. So English and math are big proponents of you know, the general ed they're looking for. And typically now these AP testings like AP Calc and AP Comp uh, and AP Language are some of those AP test credits that could be used to kind of pass those general eds. So those are the benefits of taking AP test is to pass those general eds. But to answer your question, just I just wanted to give you that background is um, when you're starting off as a freshman, you really don't know what you're doing. You know, I've had friends that they told me their third and fourth year that they switched majors. Like, you know, it's they're about to graduate. Now they're changing their major. But it happens all the time. People change their majors all the time. So as a first year, my biggest thing would be maybe taking all of your general ed first and maybe adding in every quarter a different major uh, requirement so that you're not just banging out all your major requirements and eventually let's say next year you change your major so you wasted your time taking all those courses for a specific major so uh take your time maybe just do your general eds first then once you for sure know what major you want to do then start to fill that in yeah so i have a little bit different opinion so here we it's, it's a really a um uh, you know, liberal discussion, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> different experience, different views. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually seeing, reading the next question about computer science, you know, it's about interns. So let's talk about course selection as well, is if you know exactly what you want to take, like uh -huh. you, your heart is in CS or in, in psychology, going to a college, I think, sometimes it helps just get it out of the way. Yeah. Well, so, I, right. If that's the, if that's the the logic you have, I agree. But yeah. my suggestions for you now is do some research, make some friends of maybe uh, someone that's a computer science major ahead of you a year and yeah. ask them, how is CSE 110 compared to CSE 105? And maybe yeah. they'll tell you that those are two really rigorous classes. So maybe separate them into each semester. So that's know right. how to manage your time and pick the right courses that will flow together that's right that's right yeah yeah so one is about the content right we talk mm -hmm. about like approach is you focus on the ge a little bit of major and i i said you know if you really know that you're going to be a psych major you can take as many as lower division just get out of the way yeah. is you know you know what you are getting into no problem and for UCs, I think a lot of students here at UCs, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, and the, the advantage of UC is they take a lot of AP credits, right? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of GE requirements can be met with AP. And if you, I mean, I don't really encourage kids to take commu uh, community college classes, right, for GE. But if you like, oh my gosh, UCB English is so hard. My gosh, I I would rather take computer science class, right? Like like my younger kid. And and then, you know, just look around. There's a catalog of UCB website. You can look at what computer science, not what, what English classes you can take during the summer, you know, uh, at community college that will meet your GE requirements, right? But what's the point if you're in the top of the top, right? UCSD and UC Berkeley, you start taking a lot of community uh, CC uh, classes, right? Is it worth it? So there's a little bit of trade off as well, right? Yeah. Gerard, do you agree? Definitely. You just make a plan for yourself and just stick with it. Be consistent. Then it, it'll play out just uh, pre plan and uh, have some strategies in place. Yeah, there's no right and wrong. Like, it's not, not like, you know, I'm trying to game the system by taking the CC or, you know, I load up everything with Berkeley class. It's just really up to you. And, yeah. and nobody's going to judge you. You can do whatever you want as long as you can graduate, right? Yeah. Be, graduate and be happy while doing it because I'll give you exactly. the, the motivation to exactly. continue on. Exactly. Like you can graduate, take, you know, 
my younger kid may take five years, right? Yeah. My older son's taking three years, right? I know some UCSD computer science major only took two years, right? Definitely. So, it, Gerard, how many years did you take to graduate from UCSD? I took three. Yes, three, yeah. right? So there's no judgment, you know, anything you want. So long as the financial yeah. makes sense mm -hmm. and you're happy, yeah. two to five years, it's all good, right? Yeah. Even six. I mean, if take if you want to take your time with it, it's you're the one paying tuition, right? So <laughs> if you have the budget for it, then go ahead. It's a it's a good time. You're never gonna be else be back there. So do it. Yes, yes. I have a couple of in laws and some really good host family, like taking six and seven years. You yeah, know, I mean, if it, yeah, it's a good time in college as well. It's not just all in the book. So um, yeah, exactly. You don't yeah. need to rush so, through it. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully, we answer the first. Um, a question about course selection. One thing to add, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I think I give a, a commencement speech to both my kids when they graduate from high school, and one of the comments I was making, oh my gosh, first first week, welcome to Berkeley. Okay, welcome to Cornell and UCSD. First week, you have orientation. And your kids are so happy. They're not going to text you and they're going to Golden Gate Bridge, you know, going to downtown San Francisco. And the first week's great. And second week, oh my gosh, it's a little bit easier. Then by third week, if they don't up, open up the book, they're behind. So, so my whole point to you guys, hey, your uh, freshmen, please do not, do not burden you with all the hard classes, all the hard courses the first semester. Right, yeah. Gerard, do you agree with me? Yep, definitely. Okay, how, do you remember how many credits did you take yeah, the I, first semester? I was smart. I only took twelve units, three classes, because uh, I didn't even get a job yet. I plan to get a job the next quarter just so that I could kind of acclimate into the the environment of college because it's different than high school. Exactly right. You're in the dorm. You know, you have the, your nice bathroom, your individual bathroom yeah. before you <laughs> move into like, oh my gosh, it's a triple, right? Yeah. So well, what am I going to do? I focus. Your first quarter is building a community for yourself. Build that's build right. Friends, build close connections. That it's going to make you happy to be there. That's right. That's right. Most so important. please, please don't be competitive. You're not competing with nobody. Okay, it's your life. You already got in. Congratulations. And uh, just take away some pace. And, you know, you want to take one, you know, really, really hard one and do a little bit of research. You can talk to the um, upper division friends, your, you know, alumni, and you can ask questions here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Berkeley Parents Group. I think if you're UCSD, there are parents group, but, you know, you don't really need a parents group. Parents group is for parents to have some fun, okay? They are like a re-experienced college life, you know, as students. You know, you guys can find all the answers from the Facebook, Reddit, and through your alumni is that yeah. don't take a lot of hard classes the mm. first semester, and okay? Leading into that is the first, the second question actually, Dan, Dan is mm. for a high school, high school graduate major in CS, what kind of intern can he or she get during the summer? Okay. So. Well, I was sharing when this whole CS and internship topic came up that if you like, you know, you haven't really had good experience with full stack programming you you welcome to join us but we don't really call it an internship or you know it, it's really a boot camp it is paid because we have teachers working with you yeah. and for many sessions online and offline at the end there will be a deliverable okay deliverable of an app a chat app portfolio it's about how many weeks it's it's long and yeah. i and take a look at you're working yeah. with a a, a current months. software engineer he's uh, working in the field already so he's been through the system and he understands what employers yes. are looking for so this is something that could help build up your portfolio that's right yeah yeah so he's your alumni gerard from from UCSD, um, CS or CE, oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's if if the, this can be remote, but you know the class is taught Pacific time in the evening, so that you know the EST you guys stay late. Boston you can join in in Asia. It's in the morning, so you can remote collaboration. And uh, the the key is you have to pass that prof proficient test. I trust you know for high school graduates, if you have CS experience, you can do it. Okay. At the end, we we talk about well, we'll train you on the resume, 
I just repeat it, you know, before I, I don't do this whole resume a critique and review for work. OK, we are an educational company. We haven't really expand to career training yet. And Gerard and I thinking about it, but not yet. So on the individual basis, I help out uh, with, uh, you know, friends of my my kids and somebody I know, our intern, uh, we review resume. My background later on, you know, you can LinkedIn me at, at um, uh, you know, Qualcomm. I used to do a lot of um, management, large project management at Qualcomm for 20 years. I hired a lot of people. Um, so I know what kind of resume can attract um, recruiters' attention. And um, so, th so this ECS student, and I actually, I was going to invite him to share as well, maybe in the future. He's quite busy with his graduation. You know, in the beginning, he sends a lot of res a lot of resumes out. And he focused on what he did, but I helped him to focus on what skills he has through those projects. Right, the recruiters. Outside recruiters doesn't really know what you have worked on because your company is very specific. But when you translate that, you know this language, you use this, you know, API, you use this tool that can be very attractive. So after I helped him, he got um, two offers. At least I know, and he took one in Silicon Valley. So it's great. You know, job market is really hard. So I'm I'm really ha happy for him. Yeah, in the future, I hope maybe invite him over. EECS, Berkeley 4.0 student, right? This year is hard. It's not really reflecting on any personal skills. It's um, a credential. It's just job market is really hard. But given that, you can still enhance your background, your resume, which is your face, and you can land your you know dream job. So anyway, so that's one opportunity. And Jirai, anything else you want to share about internship? <clears throat> um no i think you covered everything i think we could just move on to the next question if you're if yes you're yes yeah if you um you know our uh project's time consuming uh, if you want to something find something a little bit easier but we all said if you want to do cs internship unless your it's your parents company you really need to devote a good time during the summer, right? So given that you're just graduating from high school, do you want to go travel around the world or just working at Starbucks? You have a lot of choices, right? You don't have to start working right away. But this kind of remote job, you know, give you a little bit of balance. If you go into sit in some office, even not as paid, you really have to pay your dues 40 hours, you know. So so there, there's a balance of remote versus the actual internship in one of, you know, the 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 the, the company offices. Mm. Okay, Gerard, go ahead. Yes. And if anyone yeah. else has any questions, please leave them down below. We're happy to answer. Yeah. Uh, but Good. going on to the next question, Allison asked, mm. I'm an incoming freshman at UCB. I joined a bit late, so I might have missed some information, but do you think it's too early? to start emailing professors about interning at their research lab this fall? Um, I, I mean, if you really, that, that's the problem here you are, Allison. okay? I'd be very straightforward with you. First, you really don't know your course load yet, you know? So why do you want to commit yourself to some research project in the fall before you enter the university, I would not do it myself. What do you think, Gerard? No, definitely. I would yeah. say is once you're already in there and you have you met your professors, like after class, you could go up to them and you know really build a good connection with them. Um, emailing them, they're gonna answer you, but it's really, I would, I my suggestion is really meet them face to face and build a connection with them. Um, biggest thing, like I said, is your first year is build a community. That's the biggest thing. So you could email them to try to get a position, but if you could go ahead and meet them face to face, that's a better option to kind of maybe see if that turns into an opportunity for you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yes, yeah, so I think last session for um, uh, uh, Facebook Live, we also talk about you know meeting with professors. So the key is doesn't matter for college students, graduate students, or high school students, even middle school students, that it's really, really helpful if you can build some relationship with your teacher mm -hmm. and professors, okay? So in the, in the big um, college, right, you have the TAs, different layers, but Gerard, let me know, do, does uh, UCSD professors hold office hours? 
Uh, it depends. Depends on the professor. Some of them don't. They leave it up to their TA, but <laughs> some of them do. And if uh, what I've noticed is professors are willing to help, um, you could go ahead and schedule specific time with them. You could meet them in <laughs> their office. So they're they're available uh, if you need it. Yeah, yeah. So that's I'm saying that if you have a great great relationship with your teachers, it's really good. Yeah. But for all high school students, you know, everybody want to go to those very selective colleges, right? And the letter rack is very important, right? Most of the schools require two letter rack from academic staff, which is your teachers, right? So it's really hard if you never really open your mouth, yeah. interact with your teacher. How can you ask for a letter rack? Yeah. And they're not, and just to reemphasize, professors are there to, to help you. They're really there. They're, it's, they're not like Kim Kardashian hiding from paparazzi. They're, they're, you could go into their office and ask them any question. They're, they're more than happy to help you. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so with parents here or students, it doesn't matter what the level, you know, grade level and uh, senior, junior, you know, college, you know, please, please find some opportunities to network with the professors, right? In network, starting from, you know, a teacher ask you a question, raise your hand, right? Yeah. And if if your classmate really is struggling, uh, one of them is struggling with uh, um, some assignment and help out, right? So, and they show your empathy, show your compassion, I think, that can help you build the rapport. And, um, you know, when you start building a rapport, it's really, really helpful. Right. I wrote a, a, a post, if you guys follow, you know, read Chinese and not all of you read Chinese. And, uh, but if you do, it's the Xiao Hong Su. And I wrote a post, it's under my name and uh, Hattie Dan Dan, I think, yeah, you can search this uh, or Dan Dan. And uh, I, I talk about uh, the, the benefit or the reward, um, you know, for me and my brother maintaining and building a great relationship with our professor. So my brother went to MIT. Um, the, he has a PhD from Media Lab and his company was funded and both company, Biotech and Edutech, were, were, were given money by uh, Nicholas Nicola Ponton, uh, which is the founder of Media Lab. And uh, twice, okay, and he, other professors um, in, invested in his companies, right? So that's a relation of demonstrating your relationship with a professor, and that's at a very senior level. Myself, I had a great, great relationship with my English teachers in for undergraduate at Zhejiang University. Uh, my teacher, Mr. Zemet, helped me um, defend um, in in the U.S. consulate when my first visa got rejected back in '92. Um, I, 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 you know, want to study here. And the first time they rejected, you don't, you know, you didn't have enough money. And the second time we appealed and I was actually not questioned at all. It was missed Michael Zemet and he just passed away last year at age of 90. So how my teacher helped me, he taught me for three years. Okay. And there are many, many examples you can, if you want to follow. And I wrote in and I have some pictures on, on Xiao Hong Shu. But anyway, so that's my story of, um, having great relationship with professor Gerard, do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. No, I think you've, you really, you know, really explained it thoroughly. Uh, just to reiterate, just build connections with people, you know, students, other students, peers, professors, TAs, um, even the staff working there at the, the campus. Those are all people you could lean on if you need help. And um, like we said, last uh, live stream, a college or university is like a it's like a mini city so everything you need resource wise is there you don't have to leave the campus mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. leading into our next question um we have we are an incoming usb student heard you i mean ucb student uh, courses are hard any help that students can seek outside classrooms mm -hmm. um, interesting. Mm -hmm. i think it's on the same topic that we're talking about is um Courses are hard everywhere. It depends on the course. If you're taking some sort of aerospace engineering and you have some courses <laughs> dealing with physics and getting in, in depth with, you know, that, you know, industry, then it could be a little difficult. So lean on people, lean on your TAs. I think for you joining this, this call and asking the question shows a, a lot about how much uh, you're willing to ask other people. So uh, don't be scared to ask for help. As long as you ask for help by someone, 
they're going to continue to refer you to people they think might be able to help you. Um, mm-hmm. There's organizations on campus. Uh, I believe ours was called the uh, Teaching and Learning Commons, TLC. And you could book an appointment with a tutor uh, or if you had like help with a writing essay, that you, they could go ahead and peer review your essay for you. So there's programs like that on campus. Um, Hattie as well. Um, you know, we have a, a large network of uh, students and tutors, coaches from all different, um, all different schools and different majors, right? We have Aryan from, uh, he was from Berkeley, right? Um, mm-hmm. So you have a third year, fourth year coaches from these top schools from Cornell to uh, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, NYU, University mm-hmm. of Michigan. So all these people that are in your shoes, but you're just a first year, they're probably third and fourth fourth years. So if there's a specific course that you're struggling with, uh, perhaps Hattie has a, a coach in here in our network that could help you with that specific course because they probably took that same exact course maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah. go ahead. Dan. So yeah, so this is a little bit hard. Um, parents, um, because I'm always very active on WeChat and parents will ping me on the, when their students need help. And the majority, 90% of the time, I tell them, go get the free tutoring <laughs> at the school. <laughs> yeah, so I push back literally 90%. It's not like I'm not willing to help the students. You guys have the free tutoring. Why do you want to, pay, uh, to do a paid exactly. tutoring? And the other things I'm very honest with you, uh, you're a freshman. If I have a sophomore tutor you and it's a charge fee, there's a self-esteem. Like, you know, <laughs> there's a self-esteem. Like, uh, you know, well, he, he looks younger than me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes Definitely. parents like, oh, my gosh, begging me. And I tell them, no, 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 go get the free. And uh, then some, you know, some sessions, live sessions, you know, the kind of the TA sessions hard to, you know, to find some time. <laughs> some kids just don't want to go there to line up. Um, but we all said, yeah, it's not very successful. I mean, we have a lot of good coaches. A lot of coaches are, uh, you know, are being paid to tutor the high school students and the high school students because they need to pass the APs and uh, the, the peers are not you know not all of them are explaining the concept well and uh, STEM, especially STEM classes and the public school teachers are not getting the best STEM teachers because they are working for Facebook and the Google right or biotech companies um but for so though they are they, yeah so if you guys want to work for us down the road you know we, we welcome we do have some challenges recruiting students but for college students yeah your first um line of defense is go to your ta um uh, office hours uh, your professor office Definitely. hours yeah yeah last thing you want is your parents pinning us so anyway yeah, yeah. you have a lot of different resources and options you just it, yeah yeah but we do help we yeah. we did help and if you really 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 need it and, and the time is uh, you know when you have exam and your coaches the senior the, the juniors are also having exam as well so sometimes a little bit hard so don't wait until last 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 minute that you're seeking help if you need help and you can ask for help early but starting from your office hours okay yeah, mm, yeah good so sounds good. Anything else, Gerard, we should share? I think there's a lot of the incoming freshmen this, yeah. the, um, this session. Um, <laughs> nothing on that. If anyone else has questions, please uh, send us a chat. But um, I think we should reiterate some of the things we said in our last, um, our last live stream about leadership positions. I think because there's a lot of people here watching today. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you're, if you're the type that's a little bit more introverted and not, you know, uh kind of a little timid to maybe ask uh for help from your you know from your ta or scared to go meet your professor for this first time right it could be a little intimidating because let's say you're an incoming freshman you haven't been to this super large campus and you're going to go into your uh, professor's office i i could see where it could be a little nerve-wracking now um we talked in our last live stream how important leadership positions are um how it's a good way to uh, build up your character and kind of get used to public speaking. So 
um, joining organizations right away once you get into college is a great way to build up that community that we're talking about. Yeah, so um, Dry, just spend a, a couple more minutes to expand on that, on how you personally can help. Go ahead. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, I've, you know, back in school, I've done all types of leadership positions back in high um, elementary school, even in elementary school, I, I was a class president, fifth and sixth grade. I was a part of the leadership group um, in my middle school, my junior high, then in high school, uh, I was in it all my last three years of high school. I was a class president. I was student body president at my uh, high school. And in high school, you know, I was the guy that I was during the pep rallies at the assemblies with the microphone, cheering everyone on, introducing the sports of the season on the microphone, being the MC of the event, uh, you know, roaring up the crowd, like, you know, getting everyone excited. We're throwing out shirts to the crowd during our pep rallies, um, introducing the dance groups coming up. So for me, it was a great way to kind of put myself out there. Um, other ways, other types of leadership that I'm talking about is um, uh, even like theater. If you, you know, some people are super timid. Some of my best friends were the most introverted people. They're very timid, but they were in theater. They were in a musical. And when we go to their, you know, Tuesday night to go watch their performance or their, their play, they're like a different person. They they have so much energy. They're singing, they're acting, and you know they were able to uh, learn some of those skill sets you need when you graduate college, right? It's because when you go into an interview for uh, an employer, you're kind of sh throwing on a play, right? You have to put on a good face and really sell yourself. So all of those different skills that you do back in high school and college are transferable when you graduate. So, like I said, in high school, I did um, uh, ASB, as they called it, student body, and it was a great way of me uh, building up my skills. I was a senator in college. I did that as well. I did a student government. So, it's a great, it's student government, any type of leadership position on campus is a great thing to do because those are the types of things that are transferable um, in, in, uh, in your actual career. It's yeah. because there's a lot of politics involved with getting a job and also uh, being with your uh, coworkers, right? It's it's a lot of politics, so you, ne you need to know how to speak for yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely right. So, Gerard, yeah. So, I think, um, you know, a lot of our bring up, um, you know, right now these days, I think a lot of kids are going through, like, competition. I'm not saying every single one of you getting into top schools have gone through, you know, mass competitions, you know, Cosmos, all kinds of like mainstream programs, mm -hmm. which is really good. But however, like, you know, Gerard, so I'm asking you, yeah, did you attend any AMC competition? In sixth grade, I did a math field day competition. Okay. Singular. Okay. <laughs> and the bio competition? I did not do a bio competition. I just did math at the time. I was good at math. Writing competition? Uh, No. Okay, uh, summer program, like a residential program? Nope. Okay, I, okay, I, yeah. I was entre entrepreneurial. Everything I did was I created my own clubs. I created my own events. Those are, That's how I was in high school and uh, in college. I did, I kind of made my own path is because one thing that I'll tell you is, and I go by this, this is my branding. It's, there's so many, when you go to UCB, you see, San Diego, uh, Harvard, Yale, all the Cornell, all these top, you're, you're going against their, everyone that made it into those schools are already the top of the top. So, and Google, Tesla, they only have limited seats. So we, if Dan and I are, are both at Cornell and we both deserve that one seat at Tesla, who are they going to give it to? Right? So how I, you know, advise, uh, the interns that are in our programs, I tell them that carve your own path, make a creative way into what you're looking to get into, what industry you're getting into. So let's say Dan then gets that one seed at Google that we both wanted. I already set up, I already dropped some seeds and some other plans I had, at least as backup if that doesn't go through. 
So that's how I've always been. And I kind of try to set that up for all my interns so that they could kind of uh, have backup plans too that they're also happy with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, the, the, why I'm having this dialogue with Gerard is that a lot of parents and, and kids as well, they are like following, oh my gosh, they got into Harvard because they create this nonprofit, right? Yeah, maybe that nonprofit is important, but there's many other things that you really don't know, the family background, why they got into Harvard, okay? So I'm trying to say is don't follow other people's, do follow their resume, like, okay, doing one, two, three, even in college as well. Mm -hmm. But what you need to focus on is to enhance the fundamental skills. So one thing we already talked about, emphasize the skill of seeking help right? There are professors, there are TAs we talk about. The second skill we're emphasizing today is leadership, right? So Gerard and the last, you know, we have, this is the third one with Facebook Live is, you know, he talked about how he got the ASB president as a junior or even as a sophomore. It was a long story. And it's the recording is on YouTube. You can listen to it. It's really funny. And I think it's really funny how he did it, right? Yeah. So, um, and the, the it is very competitive. Um, you know, it doesn't matter you getting internship or getting a job, but how you stand out, how you create your own path, and uh, through that path, you can um, learn to work with yourself and learn to work with others. And that's very important. So, so leadership skills is something that uh, you will be, um, you know, carry out. It doesn't really matter you're a math major and a bio major, an English major. So anyway, so I'm not here to promote Gerard. It's like, oh, you guys come in and to, you know, get some coaching. But, you know, he's your student's age. Uh, Gerard, how old are you? I'm 21. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> Love working with you, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, so he's at your age, your student's age, and you guys can relate to his background. Mm -hmm. So he's offering, Gerard, you need to change your title here, okay, in the back end. <laughs> so our staff, Mary, going to help you. Yeah, book a session or two. Like, if your student want, I want a student to drive this, like, okay, I want to create um, a, a club. You know, how do I do it? You know, Gerard, mm -hmm. give me some ideas. And how can I attract the votes if I want to be leader in the club? Oh my gosh, I got into a conflict in a, a sorority or fraternity and how do I resolve it? Okay. And I know, I remember my, my kid was having a little bit of trouble with the co-op and how do I resolve it? So those conflict resolution skills and the leadership skills are fundamentally important because when you enter Google and the Facebook, I tell you, you're going to be happy first three years at most. Become an individual contributor. Uh, you do really good well. They give you 5% raise, give you some stock options. You're happy eating food uh, if they still offer food, uh, you know, in the future. But after three years, if you don't know how to play politics, and play politics is a, a kind of extreme word, but it's a reality. If you don't know how to work with others, that means work with a boss, work with a peers, work with a subordinate, you are not going anywhere. Right. And don't say, oh, my gosh, I'm a competition winner. I can take care of everything in terms of coding. Okay, It's really not about the coding. It's about how you work with others. Right, Gerard? I mean, yeah, the executive you're going to be talking to as you climb up, they might not even know what code means. And they're the ones in they're your, they're your boss, right? So yeah. you have to know how to communicate it to them in layman's terms. So. Yeah, yeah. So while you're young, starting middle school and high school and college and graduate school, you know, grab every single opportunity you can work with others and mm -hmm. communicate with others. Yeah. Even organizing an event, don't think you're wasting time. You're organizing um, your graduation party or organizing, you know, uh, you know, yours, your, 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 your nephew's birthday party. And that's also communication skills, right, Gerard? Yeah, yeah I mean, talking to different vendors. Just yes. put yourself out there. That's really it. Put yourself out there. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So anyway, welcome to, yeah, go on um, Hattie and check out Gerard's um, 
um, you know, uh, workshop or, or, or you know, a one-on-one. It's one-on-one. Everything's confidential. Okay, Jira, you need to change your title. So anyway, so next question is how J Chat GPT changes students' learning and doing homework. Okay, what is the best use of Chat GPT, Jira? Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually funny. It's because I graduated in the time where Ch Chat GPT just became boo like. I finished college and I didn't even touch chat GPT. So I, I can't tell you how it's changing the landscape now, uh, after January and onwards, it's really changed the landscape for everyone. Uh, personally, what I'll tell you is I went through college and with a major like mine, there's a lot of writing and essays involved. It's very conceptual, looking at different articles, different, um, uh, academic papers and making comparisons in your our own analysis. So, most of my uh, work in college was 10 to 20 page essays on different topics. And I never used ChatGPT once. So um, to answer your first question, how does ChatGPT change the learning and doing homework? Depends on you. If you want to use it, it might, and you have a lot of other things going on, you might have a job, you might have an internship. It could expedite, you know, what you're doing. But you don't want to take it away from actually learning the material. So if it's going to speed up your process, let's say some professor gives you busy work and you just need to turn something in, then use chat GPT, right? But if it's going to be for a test, but when it comes to the test, you're not prepared for the test, then it's not, it's doing you a disservice. So you could use these AI tools to your advantage, definitely, but don't uh, have some discipline and don't overuse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, in colleges, uh, I know Berkeley, what they do is two midterms and one final, and those all have good weight, right? How about um, UCSD? It's good. We're both here. And uh, I know UCSD is a quarter system. And uh, I was not very mm -hmm. positive about quarter system. But t tell, tell us a little bit about your, your exam structure. I, mm -hmm. I think it's not anything different between UC Berkeley. I think mm -hmm. every college and university is the same, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Anything technical STEM related, math or science, it's gonna be that test structure. Uh, two, two midterms and a final, right? Three things that are very heavy weight. Um, if you're taking something liberal arts, um, right? Social sciences, the tests are different or the there's gonna be tests on maybe specific topics, but if you're taking philosophy, you're going to be just writing an essay and just getting revisions from your professor. So it's two different sides of college. It really depends on um, what major and courses you're taking. But mm -hmm. anything STEM related, you're going to have that three major tests. So if let's say a lot of structure of how professors do it is let's say 90% of your grade is all on the test. Okay. What they'll do is 10% of the class is usually participation, okay? So what they'll do is a professor, a computer science major professor is going to give you three major tests worth 90% and 10% he's going to give you weekly assignments about the topic he's talking about. So those are really just participation points. A lot of professors do this where you go into maybe a online you know, learning system and if you complete each weekly assignment, you'll get 1% because there's 10 weeks. So every time you complete a week, you'll get a 1% and it'll add up to 10%. So let's say you don't even do any of the weekly assignments. You just do the, the tests and you get, you ace all tests. You'll get a 90 out of a hundred. So some people, you know, but it, what the professor tell it's just easy points just do get it done. Right? So maybe you, you could use chat GPT to answer all your questions. So let's say you do that, but when it comes to time to the test, you didn't prepare at all, right? The best thing to do is to take, uh, maybe it's not good to use chat GPT. Maybe those weekly assignments are what prepares you for the test. So maybe it's not a good reason to use chat GPT. So, mm -hmm. um, it really depends for me. I don't think it's really necessary to, to chat GPT because you're not taking double classes. You're only taking four. So. I understand if you have other extracurriculars like a job or other organizations, and that's when I'll understand. But if you're only taking three to four classes, it's really manageable not to use these AI tools. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, I think the key is you, I mean, unless you're 100% full ride, right? Most of parents are paying or yourself are paying a huge amount of tuition. I mean, even in-state tuition for UC, 16,000, just the tuition alone is not, not cheap. So I would encourage students to take advantage of this opportunity to really learn the concepts, right? And uh, not just like the results, oh, I want to A, A, just the results, uh, getting the grades, really understand how you get there. Um, because the skills you learn through college will be um, be applied to work. Yes, the work is, you know, I, I have an econ major from Cornell. I probably never <laughs> use my econ knowledge, right? For, but for the skills that though, I... For, huh? Career-wise, you didn't, but in every other aspect of your life, you use it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Right. I, I did pretty good with investment, right? <laughs> if if you if that's related, right? Yeah. So so the the analytic skills I learned in school, you know, it's a lot of um, analysis, research, right? Even though you are saying, "Oh, I'm engineering," you know, what do you mean by research, right? Research people thinking about bio, right? Everything is a research, right? Well, you go buy a home. Gerard, do you need to research where to buy or where to rent a house or where to rent a place, right? Yeah, definitely. You need to. Yeah, see. yeah. You are intern, right? You have to um, figure out, you know, I saw some parents, kids have trouble, like, you know, under 21 can't rent a car, you know, going to DC for the for the summer and sublease requires 21 or renting a car. So, so how you resolve it, right? Every day we face the, you know, face any problem. So it's research skills, right? So there's, and also communication skills, uh, summarizing skills. And this is so, so, so important. I cannot emphasize more. If there's so much information, uh, you can really understand the essence and summarize it, report it. Oh my gosh, you're the king or queen, right? Do you agree with me, Gerard? Summarizing skills. Definitely. Yeah, 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 Speaking good. That, so, like yeah. Question. So anyway, I would not. Yeah, it's it's just, it, 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 you know, chat GPT would be there. And uh, just before this meeting, we we had an internal <laughs> meeting talking about a cool project. You know, you know, we're like, oh, you know, I, I actually myself, uh, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of disabled right now. This week I had a surgery on me. So I'm much better now. But in, at one point I was like, oh, me, I, I think there's a ro robot. I, I wish I have a robot. And and helping me take care of all the tools, right? The chores, right? So in about 10 or 20 years, I think the robot will be in the house walking around and uh, getting my commands, right? So it, it's going to be there. It's uh, So I don't think we need to have any fear, like, oh my gosh, it's taking over. Software engineers are no jobs. But how we coexist with chat GPT, uh, with AI, and, and that's the key. Once you can coexist, I, I I don't see, you know, any problems myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you guys can um, disagree um, with me. What, what do you think, Gerard? No, definitely. It's it, AI is going somewhere. So it's uh, going somewhere. We You kind of just have to look at consumerism and how people move. That's why it's like, you know, you're doing computer science, but do you not think that they're also considering like sociologists, uh, anthropologists, right? Those are people that they need to lean on because they have the trends and they're the ones forecasting how, how people are going to utilize these different technologies. So, um, right. If you, if you have elective courses in college and you're just going to try to chat GPT your essay, because you're a computer science major, why do I care about this? Uh, sociology elective class maybe that sociology elective class you're taking might give you some insight when 10 years down the line when you're making a major decision for the company regarding ai if you don't okay. understand how people are and how they'll interact with the product then um you're not going to make a great decision that's right that's right very good yeah before we get into the roommate questions i just want to share with you two more things about uh, cope with colleges okay so yeah i english is not my first language so i came from china i pursued undergraduate in china before i came to michigan and then transferred to cornell one skill i think is very important is speed reading okay so in college you're going to read a lot and i think you already read a lot um through high school but you're going to read a lot more <laughs> 
in college, right? So we are offering, I actually took this class again with Miss Dana myself is offering speed reading. Uh, she doesn't like we use the word of speed reading, but she is teaching speed reading skills. So uh, kids as young as uh, sixth grade and as, as old as adults are welcome to join. Um, each person can bring a different book. Uh, she will have a baseline for you to start with your uh, word permit and your comprehension capability. And that by the end of the eight sessions, and I, I bet you some students will double if they really utilize um, the techniques she taught. So I think speed reading is very, very important. OK, I mean, you guys know for ACT and, you know, SAT um, that you need a speed reading, but it's going to the reading material is going to hit you. OK, I just tell you, especially in um, in humanities or social science major. And the other, um, let me see, I have, we have another interesting short program. Uh, Dr. Man Montes, is a, um, she's our college counselor, experienced college counselor. Um, actually her student, uh, her kid is at UC Berkeley and the other one's at Amherst. So she has a PhD in um, edu higher education. Uh, so I, we, you know, Dr. Montes PhD. So, uh, she is offering to teach us a time management and a study skill workshop. And it's really short. And I think it's about three sessions. Yeah, very short, three sessions. In all our programs starting um, sometime this summer. So first week right after um, high school is over. In San Diego, at least high school, most high school is over. Uh, the first of June, uh, uh, the, the first week of June. So with all said, yeah, those are uh, all good short program if you're interested if you're not interested don't worry and uh, so let's move on to resolve difference with the roommates how to resolve if there are issues Duran, did you have roommates i did i did mm -hmm. um, tell me the, any problems with them um we, we we had some problem i mean it, it, what i'll tell you is everyone's raised differently so it's a big mm -hmm. shocker for some people. Some people were not raised with the best etiquette, so you know, it, you're you're gonna you 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 might be bound to some problems. But um, living on campus, that's why there's RAs. Um, I remember what we did our first year was, um, before we like the first week of school, every RA goes to every kind of apartment dorm, and has everybody like fill out a form asking questions that hey um going over this is how does anybody you know have a time that they sleep is 11 p.m after 11 p.m do you want it to be quiet in the house um you know do you care if there's dishes in the in the sink and we'll take care of it at night or should we have a rule that all the dishes are cleaned every time they're used so everything is a part of the conversation because you're living with people so okay um what i'll what i'll tell you is if you're closed off and you're not willing to have an open ear then that's going to cause problems but if you're genuine you're kind and respectful uh you'll usually get the same in return so um just always communicate if you feel like you didn't like how someone did something and you wish that they didn't do that if you don't communicate that then you're just going to hold that in bottle it in maybe give them attitude uh whenever they pass by but that doesn't resolve anything because they're gonna if you don't ever tell them why you're mad at them um it's just like any relationship so it's like you just need to communicate <laughs> at the end of the day if not that's when it causes problems so communicate 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 yeah that's really good why right? so you know it, it's funny right it's, you know people get into marriage they have the prenup right these yeah. days <laughs> It's getting more and more common, right? So I'm, I'm not saying that you and your room is getting in to have the quote unquote prenup, right? But uh, I think it's important, right? When you get in, you know, the first time you meet, introduce yourself, you know, really be open. And there are some rules, you know, people are going to bring their partners in to sleep over, right? Yeah. And then it's going to impact your sleep, right? So that that that's a major problem in pretty much a lot of dorms, right? Yeah. And uh so you might want to draft a contract, right? A prenup <laughs> saying that, you know, uh, at most, right, you know, it's, you know, once every two weeks, no longer than that. You know, it's it's kind of hard, but 
I, I would have those conversations up front. No, definitely. And, and do you agree with that? that? I mean, you know yourself is because when you, before you get into housing, every college has a questionnaire and that's how they kind of lottery pick you and put you with other people. Yeah. So they ask you, are you a morning person, night person? What time do you wake up? Are you a smoker? Are you not a smoker? Do you have this? Do you, do you, in, do you care if there's pets like that type of, you know, they ask you everything. So answer that truthfully so that they pair you up with people that are similar with you. Yeah. Yeah. But still, I remember myself, right. I and mean, there's many stories I can share about others, but I don't want to, um, you know, discuss, you know, publicly, I talk about myself. Right. Yeah. So, um, in, at Cornell, even though I was a graduate student, but I was pretty much, you know, a year or two years younger than the junior and the senior. So my roommate, I remember, was a transfer student from Dartmouth, okay, uh -huh. Ling, I still remember. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we were great. But my problem is, I have a problem. I got up, re I, 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 I still get up really early. <laughs> so I got up really early. And uh, sometimes I need to pack something. And uh, so I have the plastic bag and making noise. And she hated, mm -hmm. she hated. And she goes to bed really late. She went to bed really late. So, um, and we, we really had a conversation. So I was very careful. Yeah, I still got up really early, but I tried to pack everything and put aside and uh, just take with me uh, when I sneak out of the room. So. I, I remember that that conflict. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, back in college, you know, we had eight kids living together. Oh, my gosh. You yeah. can't imagine. Were, it's, everything is a drama, right? Were you able to communicate with her the co the conflict and, you know, tell her how you felt? You mean in, in at Cornell in the dorm? Yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it was my fault, right? Because I, my sleep, it's not, was really not my yeah. fault. We have different sleeping kind of, you know, schedule. So my making noise at six o'clock and try to pack, especially the rubber in the plastic bag, I think it's very annoying, was very annoying to her. Yeah. yeah. So she told me about it and I tried to correct. I, I think I corrected and, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and we were good, you know, no yeah. problem. You're we never kind. really, you know, had a really harsh argument, you know? Uh -huh. Got it. Yeah. You're very kind. Yeah. That's very good. But well, the only thing I'll add is you know, some people are going to take advantage of you. Uh, hopefully they don't. But if you end up with a bad group, um, don't be scared to stand your ground and say your opinion um, because you deserve that. If Don't just submit to uh, to their opinion. You know, if you think something's not good, don't don't let it slide. And I'm saying yeah. that from personal experience. I've Some of the roommates I've had, you know, the, their bad influences and you know, I had to say my piece. I'm not going to stay silent and let them, you know, uh, ruin my environment because, you know, after classes and stuff, my my house, my room is my sanctuary. So if yeah, it's important that you make sure that you have somewhere that you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some roommates are really clean. Some are really messy. So I think those all need to be talked about it. You know, I don't really care how messy you are on your own bed. Mm -hmm. Just... Keep don't, the room, the communal, exactly, exactly. Don't conquer my area, right? Yeah. So kind of the pre-nap, I think it's important, especially bring girlfriends and the boyfriends into the room. And that's a biggie, right? And the second thing, you know, some folks are very tolerant, like marijuana, you really should not smoke in the room. But some people do. So yeah. you really have to, and smoking as well, right? You have to be really upfront yeah. um, with those key issues. Once you rule, move into a community living, like a co op, sorority, and fraternity, oh man, there are more dramas, right? And uh, people can kick you out, you know. And if you don't think you're, you know, wrong, just stand up. And I, you know, tell parents, uh, you know, there are legal services. Yeah. you can seek students have legal um services at uc berkeley i think yeah, all universities right send an email to attorney if you think you are absolutely right and being abused or being taken and uh, being taken advantage yeah. no yeah definitely and if you're if you're nice you're very nice people are going to see that and take advantage it's happened to me i'm just a caring and giving person so people will take advantage of that but yeah just know know your worth but you know you're there to have a good time so don't stress out too much Exactly, exactly. Okay, that sounds good. 
Okay, we're about an hour uh, and five minutes over. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Any last questions? Like we said before, uh, this is our series called called Let's Talk College. So we have this series every week. Um, if anyone mm -hmm. has questions regarding um, getting into college or surviving college or after college, uh, you know, you're getting both sides of the spectrum here of experience. So we're happy to help and give you guys any insight that will kind of make help you make a good decision. Uh, going forward in your career so uh thank you guys for coming out here uh please let us know if there's any other questions uh in okay. the chat yeah that's great yeah so next week i think uh, you know today we focus a lot about college and next week we can talk about high school as well okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah sounds good thank you gerard thank you all okay see you next time see you next okay. time Dan -Dan. yeah bye, bye. okay bye